good afternoon, evening, night, morning, or whatever time it is, wherever you are and whenever you are. And welcome back once again to Goonies World. I am Meany, also known as Ryan, and I'm speaking in my soft voice. Joining me tonight, or today, or this morning, or whenever it is, is Goonie, also known as Colin. Hello, ladies. <laughs> and Johnny Faro, also known as Sean. Hello, and this is, of course, my late night DJ voice going to the AM with the soft adult contemporary sounds. Yes. Of Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and we should start off laid back because things are going to get a bit crazy later. Yes, we're laid back now, but uh, not for long. We're playing tonight versus Pirates, which is a game by Thomas Dini, which is based on... Uh, Philip Reed's versus monsters engine and uh, it's a very simple system that uses regular playing cards instead of dice and we're going to have a piratey adventure tonight and I did gather that both of you were pirates I believe yeah I'm just new at it but uh, I'm still a pirate yeah and we'll learn all about your characters later and as you will have plenty of time to talk as your piratey beginnings will not be very glamorous as you'll soon find out but we'll start in the Caribbean Sea in 1692. And I do literally mean the actual sea. The crystal clear, beautiful, treacherous Caribbean Sea. Because two pirates, uh, Nicholas Nibble, played by Meany, and uh, Peter Petey Tweed, played by Goon. Our drift on a makeshift raft. It's actually the galley door of a pirate ship, what used to be a pirate ship called the Queen's Wreck. You were members of that crew. It was captained by a guy named Black Jasper. And even though you two were pretty different, you uh, had kind of a three musketeer situation with your good mate, Two Toes Ramsey. And uh, three of you had sworn, you know, like mutual assistance pact, and any treasure you found, you're going to split three ways. and and things like that but uh 10 hours ago you were on you were pirates on the queen's wreck but a terrible storm whipped up when you were uh north of hispaniola and it, it wasn't a hurricane but it was a terrible storm lightning struck the central mast and the ship smashed against some treacherous coral and sank and a lot of the crew got off, you could see in the chaos on whatever would float, but you lost touch with Two Toes Ramsey in all the craziness. And uh, now it's just you. The storm is gone, and dawn is broken very suddenly, you know, as it does at these latitudes. And there you are afloat on, a, a, again, at a galley door, which you can barely both fit on top of. It's actually more comfortable to, like, hold on to it and float in the water, but... You know, these are dangerous waters for that kind of thing. So I imagine you're just floating atop it. Now everything's calm, of course, but you're not sure exactly where you are, and you're just parched, parched with thirst. And uh, you already knew each other well, of course, but our listeners don't know you well, and I don't know you all that well yet. So let's take this moment as you drift aimlessly in the water to uh, describe yourselves. And why don't we start with the more experienced pirate, Nicholas Nibble. <clears throat> well, he's a uh, he's a he's a tall man. He's a uh, you know average height back then for a bloke. You know five six. He's a he's, he, but he towers above them all six four, and he's built. Got big old arms and a big old chest and a big old belly to match. Got, he's rocking the pirate dad bod of the seventeenth century. Got, would be seventeenth? Yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. yep wait. 17th century and um <clears throat> you know he might have a pact with this land lover but he 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 don't trust him <clears throat> in these sorts of situations now he's he's probably going to get his ass himself killed and uh think with that thought in mind he's going to jump off of this uh door and uh begin kicking his legs uh in, to attempt to speed this thing up some and uh point us in the nearest direction towards the land that he's aware of. 
Well, we'll find out how aware he is in just a moment. But uh, wa- as Nick Nibble jumps into the water and begins furiously kicking and paddling in an attempt to propel this galley door, let's learn more about Petey Tweed. And I believe he's got a little rat on his shoulder that he's somehow miraculously... Oh, good. I was uh, hoping he he made the crash. Um, well, his name is Mr. Twitchy. And, um, yeah, but my name's... Uh, uh, Peter T- Tweed. Some people call me Petey, and um, or some people say I've got a pointy face and a long nose, got spectacles on the tip of it, and uh, I've got uh, I'm bald, and I've got um, uh, the first thing I got as a pirate was my ears pierced. Um, Mm-hmm. Cause uh, that uh, that sort of thing wasn't allowed in the old job I had, which was some um, bookkeeping. And um, but I just got got fed up with that life, and uh, there was something missing, you know, some excitement or something. So you know, I just uh, hopped on a ship and became a pirate. Well, you suddenly are not. Uh you're not missing excitement right now because uh, just a few seconds after Nick jumps in the water and begins kicking with his feet there's a big bump on the bottom of the door and there's a big form passes right under you Nick and uh, you can see quite clearly that it's a reef shark, a big one, about seven feet long and you meanwhile, Petey you know, that's a precarious perch, that little floating door. So you need to make a, a swashbuckling test to even stay on at this point. So you draw however many cards you have for swashbuckling. Yes. And okay. you need at least a six or higher. Oh, yeah. I've got... Uh... Oh, wait. Yeah, so I draw the... I have uh, this... To tell you I have a swashbuckling of four. So I draw four cards. Yes, you do. And and I need at least what? You need a six or more. Okay, that's... Six or higher. Yeah, I definitely got that. Oh, well, and you definitely were able to stay on the door as this reef shark swam under, but um, you can you even kick on his body a little bit, Nick, you know, as it's passing under you. And you're just hoping it doesn't turn around, but it does. As you risk a glance behind you, it's sort of turning around, getting ready for uh, another run, another uh, run, probably coming in at your legs. What do you want to do, Nick? Oh, fucking get, sharks! Get on! Now he probably I fucking hate sharks. He probably, I, he probably thinks that he's gonna get a fucking meal out of us. So I'm gonna pull out my fucking cutlass and stab it in the fucking eye. Well, I, I think that's a very, very brave thing to do. Meanwhile, what are you doing, uh, Petey? And I should point out that uh, your powder was not wet long enough for the saltpeter to wash out, and I'll assume you did your best to keep that stuff dry, so we're going to assume your, your uh, firearms work. I mean, yeah, he, in fact, he would have, uh, prior to jumping in the water, which I didn't think of, but he would have, uh, he would have removed them from their holsters and put them on the... Uh, door. Yeah, unless hope that didn't fall off. Yeah. Anyway, though, uh, what are you doing, Petey? Um, so how far away is this shark now from his legs? Oh, it's like it's, maybe, it's only about it's only about two yards away. Well, I've got, to act, fast. I've got to act quick and shoot first. I uh, don't, don't want to shoot too close to your legs, so yeah, I think I will shoot my uh, pistol. Yeah, What's the worst that can happen? Flintlock pistol. Shoot him in the leg. Okay, so... And and so, you are shooting at this shark, and you need to draw your swashbuckling again. And I'm drawing some uh, cards for the shark here. What's the but, diff- difficulty uh, on this? Well, you're just trying to draw more, higher than me, and right now, oh. the highest card I've got is a six. I just drew three, three cards for the shark. And I got a red six and a black six. But uh, only six. Yeah, I got it. Okay, well, what, what's your highest card? Uh, a jack of spades. 
Okay, because for every card you have, a six or higher, you're going to do a point of damage to the shark. So, how many cards do you have that are higher than six? That are, well, that are six or higher. Uh, two. Okay. So, you do two points of damage to the shark. And it takes two away from its health score. And it does not stop moving forward, though. Although it is now bleeding in the water, I will point out. And it comes in for a bite, but maybe it won't get to bite you because maybe it's going to get stabbed in the face with your cutlass. So let's find that out. Uh, Nick, I'm drawing three cards for the shark. And ooh, I have an ace over here. Uh, I'm swashbuckling. Yes, you are swashbuckling. Ooh, nothing that beats an ace. All right, well, unfortunately, and what is your highest card? Jack of Clubs. Well, that's good at least, uh, because you're only going to take one, two, three damage from the shark bite as, uh, as it uh, brushes past you. It doesn't get a nice chunk. It doesn't get a chunk off. Perhaps it's uh, been distracted by being shot and by your cutlass waving in the face. Uh, Got to get out of the water. Yeah. However, you may describe a little twist here, though. Because I've my high card's a red card, and when the uh, GM draws a high card and it's red, you uh, get that a little twist to my narration there. And you can take twist to mean just whatever the hell you want it to mean. Hmm. I think the intention is that it's slightly advantageous. Um, well... Uh, I think... He would. What he would like the twist to be is that uh, it, it, the bite just infuriates him, and he gets to another swing at the shark. Well, I think you should be able to just immediately swing at the shark anyway, because it's not really like a hard rounds type of combat system. But uh, why don't you go ahead and draw a bonus card? Why don't you go ahead and draw? Give yourself a nice little plus one. Because you're so enraged. Nine. You know, you're not a reasonable person. We'll go ahead and do another quick, uh, what'd you say? Uh, nine of spades. Nine of spades. Well, <laughs> I also have a nine of spades right here. Huh. So, so it's kind of a struggle. There's a struggle, an inconsequential struggle, but there's a lot of blood in the water. And, uh, meanwhile... Well, now there's going to be more are... sharks. Yeah, well, and meanwhile, yeah, what are you doing, Petey? Um... You see your, you see your, your, your mate... Struggling with a shark here in the water. Oh, I'm gonna think I'm gonna do the rational thing, and I'm trying to to uh, grab my uh, mate and and drag him on. If he's too stubborn to get out of the water. All right. Well, if you want to oppose getting dragged onto the boat, then uh, then PD can uh, draw some cards for that. But if you're gonna let yourself get hauled up on, Nick, that is what your friend is trying to do. Uh, he'll he'll resist, but not enough to draw cards. Okay, and to yeah. put on a show. Yeah, printed. Yeah, nice show of resistance. Well, you do lug your friend up on Hold the me deck, back. And, and just in time because there is blood in the water and more sharks. And that's precisely why you out here yeah, <laughs> are showing up to to, to feed on oh, this uh, the, the reef shark that attacked you. It's gonna be a feeding frenzy now but unfortunately in that feeding frenzy a lot of their tails are whipping around and they're right you know under you and again you're just on a galley door and what even in a, a whole door is like one of the little dutch doors you know like a little half door from the galley of your ship so both of you please make uh, average swashbuckling a test to stay on and again that is a six or higher you know six or higher And um, I, I actually, in reading the rules, I don't remember running across this, but um, what I, I'm, I'm, when, I've, when I've drawn a particular card, I'm just discarding them, and then I'm just going to shuffle them all back in. I don't know if that's what, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And my highest card is the Ace of Clubs. Ace of Clubs. Well, and uh, Ryan, what was your high card? A Queen of Diamonds. Oh, well, much more than, in fact, you hold on rather well. And eventually, you know, the, the, all the flipping tails and the propulsion of water, plus the natural movement of the currents themselves are take, taking you away from 
the scene of carnage that you leave behind you. And uh, desperately oh. strain around looking for land. And lo and behold, there's a smudge in the southwest that you could tell is clearly land, and the current seems to be just taking you right towards it. There is a, a good, strong current here um, that is flowing more or less to the southwest at this point. Uh, you were north of Hispaniola. You know, I don't know how well educated you are in these matters. You know, there's, I don't know if you were the navigators on your boats or what, but could be any island. Uh, but as you get closer and closer, it definitely does not seem very big. And uh, it, it's maybe, it's hard to say, but it's maybe just a couple, couple miles, you know, square miles of surface. But there are big cliffs that rise up out of the water, like maybe about 30 foot high white limestone cliffs and uh, you don't see a good place at all to actually land on it Uh, there are some grasslands up top and as you get even closer but but while you still have the perspective of being able to see the top you know beyond those cliffs you think you see some animals like maybe goats or pigs you know something it's hard to tell from this distance for you get so close to the cliffs that you lose sight of it. There was also a forest up there you couldn't even tell the time. But you're now, you know, in danger of getting smashed against the rocks if you're not careful. And there seems to be only one thing for it is to try to climb these limestone cliffs. You know, luckily they're much eroded. Um, you could try to bang around the entire island trying to find a better place to land, but that could be dangerous. And uh, you're thirsty as, as hell. And, uh, do you want to try to scale this, uh, climb up these cliffs? Or are you going to try to manage to manhandle this raft around this island looking for a better place? Yeah, I think it uh, probably would be too dangerous. Um, and the, uh, so I'm for trying to kind of get close enough to these uh, cliffs to climb them. Yeah, and I think uh, that probably is the best bet because it is exceedingly dangerous. And as you come in closer, the waves aren't so terrible, they're going to smash you right now. And now is the time to, to jump up and grab some handholds on those limestone cliffs. And again, they are much eroded. There are a lot of little uh, uh, chunks that have fallen off, uh, which might not inspire confidence, but there's plenty of places to grab on and uh, clamor up. In fact, it's uh, really not even that hard. So again, it's an average swashbuckling test, and you need to get a six or more. All right, hold on, Mr. Twitchy. Going for a jump. You landlubbers. I'd rather search around for a better landing, but I don't want to split up. I'm ready to get on land for sure. All right, so I assume you drew higher than a six. Yes, all my cards are well, that's higher good. than six. Well, I don't think it's that hard to get higher than six. But, yeah. uh, but how about uh, how about you, uh, Mr. Nibbles, your reluctant uh, jump? Get up, parakeet. Mr. Nibbles was what I was going to call my right, but that's your name. <laughs> I don't even think about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't see that going over well. But your muscle straining, and again, you're feeling weak from being, you know, through a terrible storm and then riding on a raft for hours. Uh, but very fortunate to find land. And you strain and climb up these 30 feet of limestone cliffs. And, about, however, about halfway up, you realize there's there's water trickling down. It's fresh water. You might even be tempted to like lick it off the rock, and you know because you're so so thirsty. And up above you, there's actually a cave mouth. Cave mouth halfway up the cliff. Do you want and the water is trickling out of it. Do you want to stop here at the cave mouth and clean and water? Drink some clean water, or you try to climb up the rest of the way. Well, I'm stopping right away. Yeah, given the thirst situation, I think that's oh, probably yeah. prudent. Well, as you, and, it's, and so and and also again, you know, you're not at your your best at the moment, and you pull yourselves into the cave, and you can hear some bats that you startle, but they're flying deeper in. 
and they don't come get in your hair or, or anything like that and they certainly don't come out you know in the daytime but as you look in that direction you see that there is a little stream of water i mean it's really just a rivulet you know i mean it's like a trickle um but i i assume you lap some up first thing you know like scooping with your hands and, and getting as much as you can splashing it into your mouth uh there is actually a little bit of a flicker of red light coming from back further in this cave. Do you want to investigate? First, I want to drink some water. Uh, is, there, is there enough of the trickle here at the entrance to... Yeah, like I was just saying, you know, you can get down and get lap down. it up, you know. Splash well, I- a little into your mouth, get some in your palms and suck it out, you know. Yeah, and I'm gonna give Mr. Twitchy a little drink as well. He's there you go. Uh, having seen this light and interested in finding perhaps the source of the water um, and getting a better drink, uh, Nick. That's right, it's hard to get a good quaff, you know what I mean? It's hard to get like, a, the real big swallow you want. Yeah, Nick's gonna go a little deeper into the cave, but draw a pistol. <clears throat> Okay, yes. You draw a pistol. Do you want to reload your pistol, uh, Petey? Yeah, I will do that now. Yeah. I should, you know, in, in combat that could take a while, but mm-hmm. now is a good time. And as you get closer, actually, you realize, too, after your, your thirst, you know, has been satisfied, there's actually a rather pleasant smell. Almost smells like, like chicken, like someone's cooking in here. But you creep. Oh, now my tummy's rumbling. You creep closer and closer. If it sounds like I'm drawing some cards, I am. And uh, you hear a voice from up around the bend where this, this red light's coming from. And, uh, and the voice, it's a woman's voice, old and cracked. And it says, you may as well stop sneaking. I can hear you well enough. Come on in if you mean no harm. <clears throat> I... I... I mean no harm at all. I don't know why I'm Irish all of a sudden. <clears throat> of course, it don't mean any harm. And that's still Irish. Damn. I got my accents all fucked up. Anyway, yeah, yeah I'm going to go walk, go ahead and walk around the corner. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to walk right around. I'll still keep my gun out, but... Um, yeah, well, and, you know, as far as accents go, you've been on a very motley crew of... Uh, that's that's C-R-E-W, not <laughs> C-R-U-E. But you've been, and, on a very, you've, you've been a member of motley crew from, from all over, from all parts of Europe and... Uh, and North pirate Africa ships, America. they go everywhere. You might stay stay one place for a while and pick up an accent. Yeah, yeah. everyone's uh, got a mishmash of accents. I, I, for one, have been everywhere. I lived in England all over. Lincolnshire and Manchester and London... So if you hear any crazy accents, that's why. Well, you're certainly far from those places now. But in you turn the corner, and in this bowl-like chamber, it's not very large, squats a really old African lady. And her hair is all like hanging down in mud-plated locks. And her eyes seem like they're glowing red, but really you realize she's blind, and they're very, very milky, and they're just reflecting the firelight in front of her and there's a fairly large gecko that's laying there opened up and skinned you know and she's she's uh cooking uh little shreds of uh this gecko meat and uh that is what you see and there's uh, there's you know signs that she's living here right and there's like piles of old palm fronds and and you know behind her and uh some skins and various things like that but she also as you walk in is fitting a dart into a blowgun and uh, what do you want to say to her hello love uh you know um i wouldn't suppo- don't suppose you've got anything to drink have you i've rather been just been shipwrecked and uh haven't haven't had a drink been floating about on the sea for quite a bit Brother, I'm uh, Baron Samedi provides me with everything I need. And look here, you may have some as well. And uh, she gestures a little bit just out of the range of firelight. You can see there's a, a meager uh, freshwater spring just bubbling up out of the rocks where you could each get a nice, nice uh, full drink of cool, clear, clean water. 
Yeah, I guess I... Assuming, yeah, that I, uh... I walked in there... Uh, I followed... Nicholas. And, uh, I'm gonna... Drink some of that water. Oh, yeah, and I imagine you gorge yourself some water for a while. And if you be hungry, then you may have a bit of this here... Gecko as well, as they are called. But well, I'm very surprised to find you here. Well, we're, we're surprised to find ourselves here. We're shipwrecked. We don't even know where here is. Ah, you are on the island called La Navas. It is in the channel between Hispaniola and Jamaica. I came here as a young girl. I ran away from the plantation in Haiti. Ah, uh, and uh, I live here now. I used to be a young girl, but now I am old enough to be a mama. So I call myself Mama Brigitte, for that is what they called me when I was a girl. They called me Little Brigitte. And I've lived here so, so long now. And no one comes here, the Europeans, oh. because uh, they do not know there's fresh water. And even then, it is not enough. This is the only fresh water on the island. At least it bubbles up on the surface. Well, that's lucky for you, but um, have I, have you seen another... So you said nobody... Like, are we the first uh, uh, Europeans you've seen come about in a while? I know that occasionally there might be someone put here, but never for long. This used to be a French island, but now it is nobody's island. Uh, we're missing a, f- a mate of ours. Uh, we got lost uh, when we ship, when we wrecked in our ship, and uh, I was hoping he maybe if came here, but it looks like uh, you haven't seen anyone. Well, I do not have the information you seek, but I know one who does have the information. Oh, uh, well, what's his name? Oh, he is a giver of life and a protector of death. He is my patron, my patron, the great Baron Samedi. You can speak with him if you like. Well, is that a real person? Oh, Baron Samedi, very real. He's, He's got loads of wisdom he can give us, right? He will speak to you through me. But he wants something first. You must bring him a piglet. Oh, well, I'm a fresh out. Um, is there, um, I'm, I'm assuming you've seen some, there's a wild pigs on this island somewhere, maybe. I don't see much, to be honest with you, but I don't eat the pigs. I do not venture forth. Mammy Brigitte likes it here, close to the earth. I will tell you this, there is a chimney of rock that you could climb up to the surface, just there beyond the spring. You'll bring a piglet to me, and I will let you speak with Baron Samedi, and he will give you the answers that you seek. <laughs> um, alright, so, uh, just, uh, have a word with my mate here, um, kind of a private, uh, convo here. So, I don't know if, uh, if this uh, this barren lady, if she, uh, a person is, uh, is real, I think this this woman's uh, kind of nutty. Well, well, I don't know if Petey would know, but I think Nicholas Nibble might have heard of the name Baron Samedi before, because you've been, you know, in the Caribbean longer. And you have a strong sense of some kind of voodoo reference. I tend to think that she's probably, uh, she's all right. I think, I think she's all right. I think she's, I think she's on the level. I think I'm, I think I need to go up and, uh, fetch her a pig. Well, if you think so, um, I mean, well, as he's, uh, you, I'm, I'm finding out that a lot of pirates and sailors are superstitious. So you've got your crazy beliefs that y'all believe, like um, ghost fishes and whatnot, and oh, <laughs> scoff not at the ghost fish. And you know that you're supposed to be having a private conversation, but she's blind and her hearing is oh yeah, is excellent. You will see, Baron Samedi is very real, <laughs> and so's the ghost fish. You 
land loving non believing you've been you have not been out on the sea long enough to know the things I've seen all right all right I guess I'll uh, get my chance to see some some monsters of the deep eventually um but uh, yes I guess so uh, it's no harm I uh, get trying to find a piglet and uh, if she's uh she's uh, given us uh, you know uh, she's bullshitting us uh, well uh, we can just eat the pig for ourselves anyways I'm quite hungry well do you want to climb you can see just uh, you know if you take a look beyond uh, it's a little bit out of the range of the firelight but you can make out there is sort of a natural chimney of rock that uh, you should be able to shimmy up without a rope or anything you know just by pressing your arms and legs against it if you want to try to get up to the surface it would probably be easier than going back out and climbing up the limestone cliffs Yep, yeah, I think so. Well, it's like I say, it's a tight squeeze, but you make it, and you emerge at the top into a, a light forest. And uh, there's a, a wet weather pond nearby. You can tell it's not always, you know, full of water. She said there was the only fresh water here was down there, but there must be enough of these uh, freshwater ponds, that, or these, uh, you know, uh, wet weather ponds that last long enough to sustain at least some feral life around here. Although most of them might actually come from ships in the first place. Uh, but you can hear the sound of rutting pigs and uh, rooting pigs. They're not rutting. They're rooting <laughs> around. And you probably hear some rutting pigs, too. So you know there are wild pigs nearby. But uh, like I say, this is a, a, a very light forest, meaning it's not like heavy. It's not jungly. There's actually some like pigeon plum trees here. And uh, shortly fig, you can see the really sweet little figs on the, the shortly fig. Uh, you also recognize some poison wood trees, though, which can be pretty itchy if you touch them. So I'd avoid doing that. But you can also hear some uh, bleating in the distance of goats. So you know there must be a few goats running around too. But you can hear the pigs, and I'll assume you'll creep out quietly and try to look for them. I'm assuming. Well, I don't know. They might. I, I can't. I'm not sure whether they will be spooked by the presence of humans, or whether it would be better to just like stay put and wait for one of them to walk by, or to try to sneak. But uh, in the in interest of expedience, I think yeah. I think s sneaking uh, and just to test whether that spooks them. Yeah, you All right. Might as well find out. Oh, right. so, um, so this. Is there any, uh, is the ground wet at all, or is it dry? Well, it's a little bit wet because of the recent storm, but, you know, it's not, uh, it's not, like, swampy. Yeah, it's, uh, if there's any mud. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think the mud would help in this situation, since it's not really, can't really blend in too much, uh, with our surroundings. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna, uh... I guess just sneak towards the sound of the pigs. Okay. Well, as you approach, they're sort of on the edge of uh, the forest, really. And you can see those grasslands beyond them. And they're, they're rooting around at the edge, you know. And lo and behold, not only are there numerous pigs, um, you don't see any male pigs, luckily, or any, like, you know warthog style pigs but there is in fact a little pink and gray piglet that is sort of rolling around in mud while uh, some adults nearby now you think it'd be really hard to grab him but it would take a hard swashbuckling roll which would be a 10 10 he's gonna or he's gonna raise he's gonna as soon as he sees us he's gonna raise a ruckus and he's gonna get old and Piggy's running like mad. So we've got to be really quiet, sneaky. Um, <clears throat> or we can just shoot it. Did uh, did the woman um, specify alive or dead? You got the feeling you're supposed to grab it alive. She didn't specify, but she got the strong inclination that there's some ritual involved with this pig. Well, that you're literally going to be reduced to like chasing around and trying to catch a pig. Nick is going to impulsively make that attempt. 
I think that sounds in character for him, and and uh, he may draw swashbuckling cards and hope to get a ten or more. As he lunges towards the little pig. <clears throat> oh my! Um, uh, highest card is going to be an ace of clubs. Well, what color is it? Clubs, it's black. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, well, it is black, and uh, you may narrate what happens, sir. Well, uh, I swoop in and... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, bl- the black means uh, that you, the GM, will get to add a twist, I think, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well... But I'll wait for you to describe it, and then I'll add my twist. Oh, I see. Well, I was going to swoop in and uh, gracefully grab the piglet and uh, basically start running <laughs> back towards the chimney. Yes, and I, uh, I think that sounds perfectly reasonable. However, the attention of a very large male has been... Uh, you've made the attention... You've got the attention of a very large male who sees you and bellows out in this horrifying... It's like a deep squeal and comes charging through the brush at you. Now, it's not like a big horned one, you know. It's not like an Arkansas Razorback, but it's going to... It looks like it's coming after either one of you, and uh, you're both basically just going to run like hell for the... Uh, unless you want to turn around and stab or shoot or whatever this uh, big-ass mean pig. Yeah, I was going to sh- shoot it and then run. Okay, well, or go for it. Or shoot it while I'm running. Uh, okay. Yeah, I like the backwards shot while you're running. Yeah. But I'll assume you're both running for the... Because uh, this thing's not going to be able to follow you down into there. And uh, my house card is the Queen of Hearts. Well, that's certainly higher than the pig's ten of spades. And you do a couple bits of damage to him. It's enough to freak him out and make him stop, you know. And I'm sure this pig even heard a big loud gunshot, which echoes all over the island, by the way, mm-hmm. of course. And uh, it, it, it stops it in his tracks long enough for you guys to shimmy down the hole. And meanwhile, you've got this squealing, bleeding little baby pig, but it's not a greased pig. It is a little muddy. But uh, there's nowhere for it to get away. Worst thing, it's just going to fall down the hole. And uh, you keep a good, tight hold on it. And as you get back into the bottom, into uh, into Mama Brigitte's cave, you can hear her cackling. <laughs> very good. Baron Samedi, be very pleased. Very pleased. And she uh, reaches out her hands for the pig. I assume you hand her the squealing, struggling little thing. Uh, yes. Uh, what with the per- Go ahead, what are you going to do with that pig? Before you even finish the sentence with a deft motion of her wrists and a lot of agility and dexterity for a blind lady, uh, she has whipped out a straight razor, like a man's straight razor, and slit the pig's throat. Oh. And uh, it kicks and squeals and she laughs. <laughs> Holds on to it, and the blood is from his throat is like gushing into this little clay bowl. And uh, right before the blood falls into it, you see like a sign. It looks like a cross, like a Christian cross, but it's got all these weird skulls and flowers and everything drawn onto it. And then it's all uh, covered with blood. And then, though, you can see maybe why some of these pirates are superstitious, because the fire turns a deeper shade of red. And it seems to diminish just a little bit as if it's been muted. She kind of leans back, and you know how earlier her eyes were just reflecting the red. Now they seem like they're literally glowing red. And when she speaks, uh, it's not in her voice at all. It's just deep man's voice. I am coming soon, and I bring death and destruction. There are white men on this island. They are hanging on the men in the trees. They are the answers you seek. On the day of your doom, look ye to the broken god and find salvation. And then she shivers and her whole body falls to the ground and she becomes herself again and then begins preparing the pig to eat it. Oh, oh did you catch any of that, uh, Nicholas? I, I don't know what to make of that. 
Nicholas is kind of standing there with his eyes wide open. <clears throat> um, Mama Bridgie, uh, did you happen to remember what Baron Samedi said? Oh, no, 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 no. What did he tell you? Huh? He's very wise. He told so us the white men, which I presume mean Europeans, are on the island hanging people. Yeah. And he's gonna. He said he was coming. He's gonna bring death or something. Mm. I thought Very he was gonna help us try to find uh, our friend. That's uh, that's what we are really looking for. Uh, I don't care too much about uh, all this uh, other nonsense. Well, what, what he did say to you, and uh, you might not remember, your character probably does. He said there there are white men on this island. They're hanging other men in the trees, and they have the answers you seek. We're supposed to an- we're supposed to find these uh, these white fellows, I guess, and uh, talk to them. Maybe I guess one of them was uh, our friend, uh, Two Toes, but um, I don't think he'd be messing about with uh, hanging folks. Uh, but maybe they do know something. Yeah, and then, you know, and, and as Baron Smetty certainly did speak in a strange and riddling fashion, the other odd thing he said was, on the day of your doom, look ye to the broken God and find salvation. Whatever that means. So. Well, yes. Uh, so. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mama Bridgie, for your hospitality. I think uh, we should probably be off and uh, to find these uh, other Europeans that are yes, supposedly you, here. you do not tell them that uh, Mama Brigitte is on the island, no? she be good to you, or else Baron Samari will get you. Uh, they wouldn't believe us anyways. Crazy story. Um, Is there a, a way, though, that uh, we could just stay just a minute and have some of that pig and, uh, you know, just uh, get comfortable? I knew you would ask. And just in the few minutes that you've been talking, you know, she's got a nice little few little cutlets ready to gulp down, steaming you hot. You've got any tea, have you? Ah! Oh, I sure miss a good cup of tea. Haven't had one in uh, ages. Well, maybe those guys that are supposedly on the island have some tea. Maybe they're British. They are the uh, the well, white fucking Spaniards. Yeah, those uh, yeah, the Spaniards uh, got quite a tan, as far as I know, in the Carib- Caribbean. But um, I don't tan so well myself. Just turn red like a beet. So I suppose we will uh, gulp down, you know, the uh, offered meat. Yeah, it seems to give her pleasure too. She's always like, eh. <laughs> while while you're eating. Been a long time since I cooked for a man. Give a little um, morsel to my pet rot here. Yeah. Next we eat the rat. <laughs> you had best get on your way before I change my mind and really do your rat. Well, thank you for your hospitality, man. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'm gonna get uh, get cracking before uh, anything happens to Mr. Twitchy. You're not bad for a European, you two. <laughs> and with her cackle echoing. I assume you go back up to the surface. Yeah. Where to look for men, though? Uh, They certainly weren't, you know, around here when you were just up there. You do realize, though, that you fired your gun, and that if there were men on this island, they would have heard it. Now, you said there was trees, so it's kind of a forest. Uh, Yeah, it's a light forest. Not really jungle, but, you know, it's a light forest. If there's any trees to climb, we might be able to uh, get up and get a good view of the oh. island. Yeah, especially if you keep going towards the center of the island where it sort of, you know, piles up and, you know, into a, into a little mound, you know. So if you start heading that way, I assume you're going to be cautious, you know. I imagine you have your weapons drawn. You're, probably, you're going to want to reload that. Oh, that's right. That's right, yeah. Let's not forget to reload our, our pistolas. 
But uh, are you a Spaniard? <laughs> doing that, you uh, you head towards uh, you know the high part of the island to try to, to try to get a a good look at things, and uh, you hear though some sounds from up ahead as some people draw some hideously low cards. I have two twos and a three, as a matter of fact. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just saying. Every time there's some bomb detail, it's always Murphy will do it. Murphy will do it. I'm so bloody sick of your whining, you liver puddly, and fuck you. No, oh, come on, don't be like that. And up ahead to the trees, you guys are able to duck down fast enough behind, you know, some low bushes. And uh, up ahead, you can see some uh, some British Marines. You know the Marines, they wear the red coats, but it's got like white facings on it. The regular Army doesn't have the white facings. And Marines... You know, we are th- we tend to think of Marines as like the most badass in any military force, but who these are, are in general back then these are guys who could not afford commissions in the army, you know, and things like that. And Marines are tr- not treated particularly well, um, <laughs> w- nor were they particularly the best and brightest, as as you can kind of tell from this conversation they're having, where Murphy is continuing to whine, you know, and the other one keeps calling him a liver puddly and fuck. But they're getting closer and closer. They've both got musketoons which is like a short musket that kind of fills the role of a, a shotgun, sort of. Um, better for seaborne combat. And they've got cutlasses, but the cutlasses aren't drawn. And they don't seem to be particularly, you know. But the other one says, just stop your whining and keep your eye out, because you know they said they heard something out here. It's perhaps probably just some old hunter. I don't know why we should... We're going to miss the hanging. Nothing I like better than hanging a dirty pirate. Ah, shut your... Yeah. Anyway, those guys are getting closer and closer to you. Uh, but if you just keep hiding, they'll probably pass you unless you want to do something to them. Uh, um, earlier I said, um, hua. <laughs> I think that's Al Pacino, not uh, what the Marines say. What do they no, say? I think they say hua. It's like hua. Oh, that's right. Ura, 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 that's yeah. right. Ura, yeah. Okay, just wanted to make that clear. You know, the listener may not know this, but we're not really... United States Marines material here on, uh, <laughs> on, on Goonies World. No, no, no. That wouldn't that wouldn't have flown in my life. I don't think. I don't think I'd cut it. Nope. Um. So what I would like to do is the <clears throat> more sort of aggressive, assertive one who's calling the other one names. Um. When he gets at the closest point to me, I'd like to erupt out of my hiding place and grab him from behind and put my like arm around his chest and my gun to his head and sa- and s- immediately say, Don't say a fucking word! All right, well, I'm not going to let him draw cards for that. I'm just going to assume this is uh, average because he has no idea you're there. So you need average is six. So let's make a swashbuckler and roll. Uh, and hope you get a six. Oh. oh, he's always been so impulsive. And... Wow. Not a good uh, draw, but I did end up with an eight of clubs. Okay, well... So good enough. That's good enough. And uh, so you you succeed, I assume. You know, you, you get to narrate what happens, so I assume that you narrate that you Ooh, jump up and what? do what you said you were going to do. And yeah, and I uh, tell him not to say a fucking word, and to his, his other guy, you know, uh, I, I also, you know, keep your mouth shut up, blow your friend's head off. Okay, well that goes great, and, then, and they both are, are completely taken by surprise, and the liver pudly and fuck, he's still holding his musketoon, you know, but he lowers it, he didn't drop it. You know, but the guy you grabbed did drop his, you know, out of out of fear. The twist I'm going to add is that in doing this, you rubbed your forearm up against the, the poison wood tree and it's like starting to itch real bad already. Basically, you're like a poison ivy type problem on your right forearm. But uh, as of right now, that's not a, you know, terrible, terrible detriment. And you probably have only now just noticed it. You know, I feel that, that, that sting and itch on your on your arm. But other than that, he's... Uh, and and uh, so the liver puddly and Murphy, like, easy now, easy. No one wants to, no one needs to die here today. I don't plan on anybody dying. I I'm just, gonna... All right, go ahead. I just need to, I just need to 
I just need you to answer a question, that's all. Yeah, I'll answer you a question in hell, says the other one, who's the one you're grabbing. Shut up, Lincoln, he says. That's not how you... That's not, that's not how you speak to someone who's got a loaded pistol for your head. Ah, uh, what is it you want, then? What's Two Toes? Is that his name? Yeah, Two Toes Ram. Two Toes Ramsey. That was your buddy. Yeah. I need to know the location of Two Toes Ramsey. Uh, look, I don't know the names of, of these pirates. I, I, we, all I know is this. All right. Yeah. Just take that, take that arc and get that blade just a little further away, will you? Right. You, hey, you, you know, you're gonna watch out because there's. There's a full ten more Marines here, as well as Captain Murgatroyd himself on the island, the Queen's Navy. Now uh, listen here. While he's talking, while they're mm-hmm. distracted, just walk up uh, with the, my gun pointed at the, the other guy that's Murphy. not being killed. Yeah, no role necessary for that. But uh, Lincoln, you know, the more aggressive one with the gun to his head, uh, he, he he says, we're, we're, look, we're crews of a sloop of war, all right? Small ship, small crew. We're out, outward bound from Barbados, heading to reinforce the garrison at Port Royal, Jamaica, all right? And we come across a wreck, a great big wreck. And lo and behold, is Black Jasper's ship, the Queen's wreck. And so we stop pulling blokes up out of the water. And uh, we put some of them on the Phobos, which was our ship, and some of them went on the Demos, which is the other ship. And I don't know what happened to the blokes that was on the Demos, but we got a load of pirates, all right? And uh, you know what they did? They decided they was going to make a break for it. Poor fools. Yeah, poor fools, says Murphy. And so Captain Murgatroyd ordered that we're just going to land right here on the closest island and hang them and have done with it, according to maritime law. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I don't know whether your two toes Ramsey's down there among that lot. What's gonna get hanged anyway? Well, because we already got two of them, you know. Yeah, we already got two of them. Well, I guess if we uh, are able to count the toes, on we could find out. Well, have you got one down there, constantly barking about a ghost fish? I ain't heard nothing about no ghost fish. Then he must have been on the D-Mouse. Oh, I hope so. Listen, if you know what's good for you, you'd better just let us go. Um, where's all the other uh, crewmates? Are they, where are they uh, going about? They're down hanging the pirates at the beach. Yeah, the down beach. at the Crescent Beach. It's on the western side of the island, says Murphy. But you might as well just sneak off and bugger off, and we promise not to say anything about you until uh, until we're back on the Phobos. They sent us up here because they thought Captain Murgatroyd thought he heard a musket shot or some such thing, and some others thought they heard a tree falling down with a great crack, and they so they sent us up to investigate because they're always sending us, and we miss all the fun. Oh, shut up! I've got a gun to my head. You've got no problems, says Lincoln. So that seems to be about the, 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 as much intelligence as they have. Uh, and you say you don't know where the Demos went. Well, we're all going. we all going to Port Royal in Jamaica to reinforce the garrison. So my guess is they's going there to stand trial. Except those lot here on the Phobos, they never gonna make it to trial, eh? <laughs> but perhaps I, perhaps I should listen. You do have a gun pointed to my head. But I get the feeling you're not going to kill me, sir. Because I can tell you he's a gentleman. I don't intend to kill anybody. Well, I was hoping we... I mean, I'm kind of stalled for some pirate action. I became a pirate and I've been drifting around on the on the sea on a door. And I haven't gotten any... I, I, I think maybe... Um, I think we should uh, gut these guys. Uh, stab them with our cutlasses so they won't... Uh, so they won't hear our pistols, right? Just because they're gonna go and tell Captain Murgatroyd straight away. Oh, no, no, that won't be necessary at all. We we we, we surrender to you, and, and uh, we'll we'd rather be marooned here than die. But listen, you haven't got a chance. 
We got ten marines down there and Captain Murgatroyd himself, and for all his girth, he's no slouch, believe me. Furthermore, we got we got a dozen more sailors oh. on the on the Phobos out there and uh, out there offshore. Not that those sailors are worth a shit. Half of them are no better than pirates, fr- frankly. But well, I've just half a mind to go and see for myself if you're telling a fib or not. But right now, I think we ought to silence these two two uh, gentlemen. Uh, I think they uh, deserve to uh, die because uh, they've they're killing our mates, right? You know. And uh, I don't like that. Uh, I won't stand for that. I'm a pirate. Right. You probably, Proud of it. Prob- you probably shouldn't say that so loud. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, um, and look, he's he's not really a pirate. He's 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 a landlubber bloke from. Anyway, I've I've got an idea. I don't know if it will work though. When are you lot heading to Port Royal? As soon as these pirates is hung. Well. What do you think the chances are that we could hitch a ride aboard the Phobos? They'd never You'd, be able it to. It would never work. A sloop of war's not very big. You only need a crew of, say, oh, you could, eight men could sail it in a pinch. Do you, does it have uh, any, uh, like, rowboats uh, attached to it? Or, um... It's got a small ship's boat. It's on the beach right now. As soon as we hang those dozen pirates, they're out of we've here. Got to, we've got to go and confiscate that. Commodore, that that little rowboat. Or else we're not getting off this island, and we've got to kill these two because they're going to blob their mouths. No, you don't need to kill us, says Murphy. Mum's well, the word. See, someday I think I'm going to be a captain, or um, maybe I'll start off uh, being, um, you know, I'll work my way up and be a quartermaster. But eventually, I'm going to be a captain. I've got to. Uh, show what I'm worth and no captain would leave these two these two uh, men here to uh, go and blab to their captain so ah, you wouldn't do it you don't have the guts says Lincoln well I'm thinking about it I'm working up to it I've got half a mind to pretend as though we've surrendered to you and you take us as prisoners but that seems like a rather complicated scheme just to get aboard your stupid ship I don't want to be on their ship. They've got uh, too many others. I think we've got to just get that that little ship. uh, Or we've got to find another way off. Well, you got supposedly a dozen dozen pirates. And if it's the... They're probably ones you know already, you know? They're probably from the same ship you were. Could uh, we... So you got about ten marines, a dozen pirates. Of course, the pirates are probably tied up or something. Well, if we could sneak in and go and and um and un you know and cut these uh, these pirates down from the trees if they're still alive and untie the others if they're around, maybe they, then we could have a, a fighting chance. Maybe maybe we do kill these guys, put on their clothes and pretend to be them. <laughs> That's oh, a good no, idea. You don't need to kill us to do that. You look, just strip us down to the skivvies. We'll walk to the other side of the island and walk back, and you'll be, you'll be all done by then. I mean, it's better than because all these rags that we we have on now, they're they're a dead giveaway and they're soaking wet still. And I think um, if we, if we I'd like to just have a change of clothes. Period. So um, right. I think you could strip off your clothes now, please. Well, yeah. they began reluctantly stripping off their. Uh their marine red coats and their white breeches and uh, their stockings and all that stuff. Right, and, and just, uh, we're going to need your uh, musketoons and uh, cutlasses as well. Yeah, they, they handle that stuff over. Just don't kill us though, Roy, says Murphy. Oh, shut up, Murphy, says Lincoln. You're embarrassing yourself. Well, I think that we should, but uh, you know what? I saw that uh, little that piggy getting uh, getting his throat cut now. That was uh, just a pig. No, I didn't find that to, to my taste. But uh, I still think I make a good pirate. I just maybe I'm a little bit uh, soft as one pirate. Oh, you're we'll not see. soft, sir. You're not soft, sir. Says Murphy. It's a scholar and a gentleman. Which one's saying that one? Murphy. Is he, is he the scouser? 
Huh? The, the, the liver, liver puddly. The liver puddly and fuck. Yes. They're they're, yeah. they're called scousers. Scouser. Shut or up, s- you bleeding scouser! Yeah. Says <laughs> Lincoln. But uh, do you want to let him live? Um, Nick does. Okay. Yeah, I think you've gone soft. I think I think you'll be a good captain someday, but you're. They they like walk they like start walking off with like their hands over their head. We just take a nice little per- we'll just perambulate over to the other side of the island then. Can't let them go. Um with well, at least well we don't have anything to time. Uh I'm going to go up while they're walking away I'm going to go up uh, behind them. At least one of them and slit his throat. No. Uh, well stab. which one? Actually, I actually think it would be easier just to st- stab um We'll stab this scouser. <laughs> All right. Well, that's terrible. And uh, you come up. I mean, you, we are pirates, aren't we? I'm not even gonna make you roll for that because he does not expect it. Now, now you've got, you know, now. Um, so the poor scouser, poor Murphy, falls to the ground, and uh, uh, in a panic, Lincoln starts running. But he's not running back towards the beach. He's, you know, where his people are he's running deeper you know into the into the forest and and, you know the center of the island he's running as fast as he can and he's like i love that liver puddly and fuck you heartless son of a bitch you're the evilest pirate i've ever seen well now if he's screaming i'm gonna shoot him all right and boom and uh i'm not gonna make you really roll that either you know because he's not that far away yet but he's screaming, and made some noise, and then the gun made some noise. But um, you certainly know the direction they're talking about. I mean, they, there's a slight slope downwards towards the other side of the island, and you can hear some shouts down there. And uh, actually, this could really work out in your favor, because I assume you crouch down when you hear the shouts, and then charging up the hillside to the to the trees, you can see there's about eight Marines. And he said there was ten of them down there. Eight of them are out here in the woods now trying to figure out what the hell has happened. And um, <clears throat> and they don't see you yet. And, you know, they're maybe about, like, 30 yards away. I'm, I'm tempted. Well, I'm tempted to jump up and point into the forest and say, Pirates, get them, boys, and then run to the beach. That might work. We all wear in the clothes now. We've put them all. Yeah. So. And, it's, you know, it's through some trees, and it's about 30 yards away. Go for it. All right. Well, Nick's gonna make sure you put on a liver puddling accent, right? I'll try. <laughs> He's gonna jump up and say, um, <clears throat> and point into the woods and say, <clears throat> "Me and Lincoln seen some pirates. They're uh, they're, they're over, over that way. Go get them, boys." Okay. Now make a parlay test. Oh. This will be average. You need six. That's my weakest possible stat, but six is not. Terribly hard. Let's see what it gets. A five and two sixes. Hey, that's great. That's great. That is good news. And they go charging off in the direction you pointed. And uh, do you want to go down and check out the beach then? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, they go, oh, that way, go get them. And, uh, thanks, you scouser. One of them yells. And, uh, they, <laughs> you, you, uh, Come down to the place where there's a sudden drop off down to a beach, just like maybe like a ten foot drop down to the beach, and there's an old fallen tree here. You can kind of crouch behind and look down, and there's this immensely fat guy. He's got this huge, you know, captain's hat, and he's wearing like the big blue, you know, Royal Navy coat with the gold facings on it, and he's got like a pouting, petulant face. He's wearing a wig, his face all covered with sweat. And there's two Marines, and they've got Muscatoons leveled at ten pirates who are on their knees with their hands behind their head, you know, being covered by these Muscatoons. There are two pirates who are already dead, hanging in the trees. But you recognize all these pirates. You see Filthy Pierre and uh, Louis LeBlanc, and you see that big African guy you guys call King David. And uh, and uh, the first mate of the ship, actually, the, an Irishman known as Rum Blossoms. And those are just some of the guys you know. But the others are all, you know, members of the crew members of the Queen's Wreck. You don't see two two toes Ramsey down there. Hmm. And of course, uh, at this point, you know, I'd say they're maybe about like uh, 
80 to 100 yards away from you. you, know, you got pretty far away, but that's what you see. And, of course, the ship's boats pulled up onto the beach, and then just a little bit off into the water, not too far away, you see the Phobos, which is a sloop of war. It's about 30 feet long. It's got four guns. You know, it's uh, it's mostly like a revenue enforcement type ship, things like that. All right, your turn. See if you can get them to run up one off into the woods to find the, the ghost pirates that aren't there. Yo, I think I can get the Marines to I don't think anything in the world is going to get that uh, fat captain to leave. He's going to stay right there. But, uh, uh, yeah, maybe I can uh, get the others to leave. And then we can go and uh, take care of the captain. And then we can take the ship with our friends. All right. Um, so, uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, let's get... Uh, Get in range here. Get a little closer. And say, um, I'll jump up <clears throat> and say, they're there, right over there. There they are. And um, uh, well, they all look yeah. over in your direction. Uh, but go ahead and make a parlay roll. This is going to be hard because Corvette Captain Murgatroyd is no slouch. Okay despite his great girth. And he might not feel inclined to send away his remaining two, you know, Marines who are covering 12 angry pirates. Well, 10 now. Okay, we well, need a 10 parley, or more. Okay. Parley is my best skill. Yes, and I have already gotten a King of Hearts. Well, King of Hearts... That means you get to narrate exactly what happens. Uh, yeah, I, I would say... Um, With the Marines. That I would say that uh, Captain, like, you know, because he hears it too, and, and they, they all look that direction, and he, he gives them the signal that they should uh, go run after, you know, in that direction. That's what um, I was totally imagining him doing, like giving a you know, insufficient yeah. signal, you know, the toss of his head. So they do, they're oh, and uh, he's still covering and when you hear his voice booming now don't you get any ideas you dirty scurvy pirates, you're all going to hang eventually and uh, those two guys go running off uh, the last two marines go running off into the woods now you heard mention of ten sailors on board the ship but sailors are generally not fighting men and you probably can can be overpowered or dealt with one way or the other if you had all your pirate friends free. So, taking advantage of the disguise and this sort of chaos, Nick would like to impulsively draw... I mean, now he's got two cutlasses, right? Because he's got, like, the uh, the other guys in here. Yeah. Um, and uh, draw one of the cutlasses and just run towards the pirates Um as, as though he's going to like just start killing them um, and shouting you know there's there's more pirates there's more pirates in the woods there's pirates everywhere I'm gonna kill all the bastards <laughs> like hold up there Lincoln or Murphy or Link 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 Murph Mur, Link what why are you I uh I, I've just done like a parlay for him and I've got a king of hearts here so I'm gonna say he recognizes that it's not you and he and uh, he whips out his his uh, sword and says, "Have at you!" I'm gonna run in there as well. All right. Ah, so it takes two of you to fight the great Captain Murgatroyd, does it? I'll show you a thing well, or two. You're about the size of two men. Do you guys <laughs> want to fight him? Um. So instead, of, obviously, instead of if I'm near enough to one of the pirates, I'd like to uh, use the cutlass to cut them free and then throw them the spare cutlass. Well, you can certainly cut one of them free. And uh, uh, I'd recommend King David. Great big black dude. He's from North Africa. If, he, if, he's, if he's close enough, yeah. Absolutely. He's the best fighter on the ship and he's close. Uh, but but all of them now, they're they're cheering for you guys because they recognize you guys now. And But if, in order for you to start freeing these guys, I think PD is going to have to you know, the, the Captain Murgatroyd is determined to cross blades with somebody. And he doesn't move very oh. fast, but he's moving in relentlessly like a great dreadnought battleship. Well, I've got to prove I'm a real pirate. 
And I guess it, the best way is to get in a swashbuckling fight. You hang like a pirate, but you sound like a West Country bookkeeper to me, says Captain Murgatroyd. But I've already killed uh, a man today, and I, I think I've got a taste for blood. Well, I didn't think I, I'd like it, but I've got one now, and I, I think I, I think I'm gonna kill you as well. Well, let's hope so. Go ahead and draw your swashbuckling. <laughs> I get, yeah. I, I He's get a lot of cards not for too this good guy. At that. I know, and I've got like very high cards here. But go ahead and draw yours. Meanwhile, okay. I assume you are going around. You've, you've tossed a blade to King David, and you're freeing the others. While no, he's... no, I just wanted to free the one. Okay. Uh, and then I'll join them. Then you'll join him. Yeah. Okay, so... I might take both of you. Um, I have... Uh, my highest, highest card is a King of Hearts. But if that doesn't work... If that doesn't win, I also have Lucky, which allows me to draw redraw cards. Well, I, I don't to. think you need to, because... Uh, uh, my highest card is a Queen of Spades. And so, you get to narrate what happens, which probably that you do damage to him. What was your, uh... So anything you have higher than the Queen of Spades, you've done that much damage to him. Okay, so yeah. would that, that would just well, be one anything, point. Yeah, one point of damage to him. Are you hey! And you can tell, though, that he's a skilled swordsman. His, his dexterity is all in the wrist and arms, you know, because he's so fat. But uh, just about this time, though, luckily... Uh, your good friend Nicholas Nibble comes rushing up into the fray. Uh, yeah, it takes two of you, you cowards. And meanwhile, King David is uh, slashing the bonds of Filthy Pierre and Louis LeBlanc, LeBlanc and uh, Rum Blossoms and uh, your other pirate friends. But go ahead and draw your swashbuckling cards, Nicholas. I have drawn them. Okay, well, the highest I've got is a jack of clubs over here. Um... And uh, so I have to beat, not meet or beat. You just need to get higher. You need to beat your meat. <laughs> um, yeah, right, so you're so not, you won't. If it's also a jack of clubs or whatever. I have two well, jacks, but I also have two aces. Oh well, I mean, that is higher. And so for every one higher than jack, jack and higher, you're going to do that much damage to him. So you got jack, queen, oh. king, ace. You need four damage to him. Something I should uh, remind us all is. Uh, with since we're using, are we all using cutlasses? Well, everybody's using swords, yeah. Well, uh, swords, but uh, so with those, oh, the you plus get one. That's right. You get plus, plus one, one damage. If you're using you get a plus the, two. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that reminder, because gun uh, swords leave a scar and guns are messy. Let's go ahead and take. So actually. Altogether, you guys have done like seven points of damage to Murgatroyd between the two of you once you go back and factor in that extra. Sounds about uh, right. Yeah. And so, uh, by now, though, all the pirates are free and they all stand up and they're all stalking towards Murgatroyd. And he's like doing that thing where he's, he's got the sword out, but he's backing away from this, like, from all of you. And he's like, Men! Men! We've been bamboozled! Come back here and defend your Corvette, Captain Murgatroyd! Uh, the. the King, King David says, let's hang him. Hang him like he hanged our friends. Yeah, but uh, I don't <clears throat> I don't know how we're going to get that uh, big mass, uh, hoist that mass up. He's too heavy. Might have to stick him like uh, like a, one of those pigs. Yes. Stick him like a pig, says, uh, says one of the pirates. Stick him. Stick him. Stick him. They all start saying, stick him. Stick him. Stick him. Are you guys going to stick him? Uh, I'm going to join in and stick. Yeah, I'll stick him. With, with well, nice. just as you guys come in to stick him, he like flourishes his blade, though. He's only got three health left, but he flourishes his blade sort of bravely, but comically like, for the king and country and walk, 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 walk. And you guys stab him. And then all the other pirates run up and they start stomping on him and, and, and beating him and everything like that. I quite but, like this. But then you hear the sound of musket fire, like a bunch of musket fire, like up from... It's even out of range, you know. They're foolishly firing down at you, and you can see a line of red coats like in the hills above you. I mean, it's going to oh, take no. a while to get down here, but now might be a good time to make your escape. We must make it to the ship. To the yeah, ship. Yeah, Come in on, fact, boys. Uh, the Rum bubbles Blossoms, is ours. Rum Blossoms has already made it to the, the boat, you know, and is starting to pull it out there. The sailors are all looking on aghast, 
from their perches on the Phobos. But you roll out, and the men, the men, you know, they, they run down to the beach. The Marines are chasing you, and they're watching you, you know, row away in the ship's boat towards the foe. And they're shaking their fists and ineffectively shooting their muskets at you. And uh, you end up being hanged. All the pirates are laughing and making rude gestures to them and begin scampering up the the ropes and the ladders on, back onto the Phobos, and I assume you guys too. And the sailors, there's ten of them, uh, you know, they're barefoot. They're not as uniformed as the others. They've got some blades, but they're not even issued blades. They have to go get them out of the ship's locker. And they're kind of standing very fearfully back to back in a circle, holding their blades out. But you can see that they're like, they're shaking, you know, a little nervous. Since you might be able to talk them into either going pirate or surrendering or something, maybe. I, uh, if I need to, I will use my, um, my parlay skill, but, um, I would just like to say, uh, mate, so uh, if you serve under a pirate, uh, on a pirate ship, you'll be treated much better. We've got, uh, some sort of de- called a democracy, uh, you know, it's, we're, we're, we're very fair. And um, I think you'll be better off. You certainly make a lot of more money if you join us. Well, I think you should make a parlay okay. uh, test, but I think you're only going to need a six. Because even if they're not committed in their hearts to joining you, they're probably committed in your hearts to doing whatever they got to do to stay alive until you make port somewhere. Queen of Spades. Okay, well... You do succeed, but with a twist, and I think I'll keep the twist to myself. Okay. But, indeed, uh... <laughs> the twist is going to be a knife they're going to twist in my back later on, I think. That's right. But, <laughs> uh, but, with, to, to, with great applause, you know, your pirates scamper, scamper all over the Phobos, and it is nice and clean and ship shape like you'd expect it to be. And, of course, the... Uh, you know, the Marines on the beach are now kind of standing glumly around their fallen Corvette Captain Murgatroyd. The ship, they call it a sloop of war. It's really more of a Corvette, but you don't even need these sailors to run it. Your pirates can run it. You only need about... It's slated for a crew of 12, but eight men who don't like to sleep very much can do it. And so that's what you've got, and you uh, are finally on it. Now, where you want to go, I don't know, but my guess is you probably want to head to Port Royal because that's where this ship's sister ship, the Demos, went, taking your good buddy, your best mate, Tutos Ramsey, with it. And he'll surely be hung after a sham trial uh, at Port Royal. Yes. Yes. Always wanted to go to Port Royal. So far, I wish uh, wish uh, we still had privateering. No, it's just... Everything's illegal. Cleaned up the city. Don't like it, but uh, I think we should go there. Well, Nick's going to uh, hop up on the, uh, you know, like the the. Where, I'm not sure exactly how the ship's laid out, but I'm imagining there's like a you know it's a, a single wheel, mass ship, a wheelhouse. A little, yeah, so it's like a little wheelhouse. Yeah, and he's gonna hop up there and with <clears throat> the air of a pretending someone pretending to be. Um, a captain who knows things about ships um, who, who, who he kind of does but not you know he's not super ever had two ambitions you know in that direction mm-hmm. but he, he's gonna say um uh, hoist up the Fobo sail see how the main sail sets <laughs> and of course to miss scamper into action and uh before you even so lonely <laughs> want to go home <laughs> I'm glad somebody got that <laughs> no, I didn't get it but they, they the pirates probably didn't either no, but well, they do the Beach Boys weren't around in the 1690s <laughs> oh I even have the record pet sounds I should have gotten that but um, you guys do sail off into the west uh, towards Jamaica and uh, into the uh, into the afternoon sun in a beautiful the beautiful uh, Caribbean Sea. And whether you get there and whether you'll rescue your friend, I don't know. Now, as a reward, you are awarded a hold card. You should make note of this. We don't forget about it at our next session. But a hold card is you get to draw two cards from your deck. Oh, you can shuffle it. You know, the idea is it's a full deck. So you can put your deck back together. You draw two cards and you keep one of them. 
and you just hold on to it, and uh, you can replace any other card with it. You know, like hopefully the idea is you draw a high one. If you draw a low one, it's not all that worth it. But mm -hmm. okay, should we do that now? Yeah, go ahead and do that now. Oh, draw to draw hold draw the hold card. Or? Yeah, go ahead and draw the whold card now, and then let's like set aside, make note of what it is. But we draw two. Draw and two, then and pick then pick one. Okay. To be your hold card. Oh. Ooh. Well, I got a, a pretty fancy. Yeah. Oh, good. Get a, good. Well, got you can an hold ace. It. Oh well, I guess we don't really need you to get an ace of spades. Uh, no clubs. No. Okay. Well, you guys go ahead and make note of that, and uh, have that card ready because any time during the next session, you can throw that down just like you drew it. And so I think for tonight, though, that will be it for our uh, pirate adventure. And we will see you next time on Goonies World. Arr, arr, arr.